Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Got my good friend Phil here. What if I told you that Bitcoin and stablecoin is a construction of the U.S. government, and we're going to tell you why that's a good thing. Stay tuned. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out, what you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Phil, this is really interesting. I was always, always trying to figure out really what was the upside here. I always felt in the heart of hearts that this was a, a United States construction, you know, Bitcoin to protect the dollar at some point. But this is a little bit different, but kind of the same. And I think this could be awesome and enormous. I'll let you explain. Yeah, so Paul Ryan, right, the ex-House Speaker, wrote an op-ed in Wall Street Journal and said crypto could stave off a U.S. debt crisis. So what does that mean? Well, he specifically was talking about how stable coins, which are basically a crypto representation of a dollar. So it's a dollar-backed crypto token. So, you know, USDC is an example of a stable coin. Tether is an example of a stable coin where uh, they should be backed by a dollar or dollar equivalents in in Tether's case, it's treasury holdings and some other things, but you basically have a one for one dollar representation or pretty close to one to one. And so basically it allows you to move dollars around outside of the SWIFT system, outside of the banking system. And there's a big demand for that. You know, funds it, funds can more easily move between exchanges, crypto exchanges. Uh, crypto exchanges are huge holders of stable coins because majority of their uh, dollar based or dollar denominated markets are done in tethers, USDT. Uh, and they also have USDC markets, which is a, a function of Coinbase and Circle came up with their own uh, stable coin, USDC. So basically, you know, when you look at stable coins and tethers, the biggest one, right? They're the big gorilla in the room and they hold hundreds of billions of dollars worth of tether holdings. So they're taking those holdings and they're actually buying US treasuries with them and using that to back the uh, stable coin value. Uh, and that works for them really well because, you know, if you're making four or five percent on hundreds of billions of dollars that are parked you know that's a decent uh, daily income so they're making huge money on that and then on top of that after they cover whatever expenses they have which isn't a lot you know for what they do relatively speaking they turn around they buy bitcoin into their treasury <laughs> so uh it creates a nice positive feedback loop but the point is bob is that you know we have this massive demand for stable coin issuance it's not going to go away you know his point paul ryan's point is like why are we stifling innovation you know we should be embracing stable coin embracing crypto because at the end of the day they're incentivized to buy debt and get interest payment on that debt especially now when interest rates are as high as they are so he his point was that you know let's embrace this it's going to help with our debt and the debt appetite and it's a win-win so you know he's right i think that's an elegant uh, solution to the problem you know long term obviously we have to rein in the debt and the spending but in the meantime you know this administration has been very hostile to crypto and that's probably the last thing they should be doing because of the fact that there is such a big demand for treasuries tether is bigger than saudi arabia now in terms of treasury holdings they're just outside the top 10 uh, in terms of countries so you know it's not it's not just some fanciful idea it's it's a it's a real thing and they have a real appetite for u.s debt yeah, the other thing too, it spreads the risk out too. So you have the Federal Reserve could keep offloading their debt and the tether market can, and the stablecoin market could keep taking on the debt. And th this debt then is internationalized too, Phil. You know, and so really interesting to me. You know, two things. One is, you know, the NSA wrote the whole thing on the cryptocurrency. Big issue for me there, number one. And number two, these stable coins are getting a higher return than they would if the mint printed dollars. So pretty amazing to me. I, I just think this is awesome. I mean, when I 
first read this, I didn't quite get it. And then I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh, of course, it makes perfect sense. And I don't know why the Biden administration is is, is against it. Is you know, it's it's it, it's really a weird phenomenon. It's it's I think it's the MMT people, you know, that doesn't want to have fiat hinge to anything versus somebody that wants to at least anchor our dollar and our debt. So it's like I think the money changers in, in, in the Biden administration continually want to reduce the value of the dollar. And this actually keeps our dollar as a reserve currency for a long, long time. It's like kind of like having the number one, you know, left tackle coming on into the league here to protect your quarterback, you know, and I think I think this is really, really interesting. And I, and I hope it just continues to grow, too. And then you were saying, too, that they're turning around and buying Bitcoin with this, too. So it almost becomes like a, a feedback loop, too, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. So like I was saying, Tether, for example, you know, they, they're buying with their excess profits, right? So that interest payment, ultimately, that they're getting from the U.S., is helping to drain the Bitcoin supply. <laughs> so uh, the government wins uh, and we that hodl win. <laughs> yeah, and remember guys, and if you buy Coinbase stock or CONY, the high yield piece of it, you're participating in that too. So there's a lot of ways we, we, we can make money on this thing other than just trying to buy a stable coin and picking up, you know, two or 3%, you know, they're, they're getting a yield and they're getting a, a, a yield to borrow. And then if you own the underlying stocks that, that do this stuff, then you're going to get a pump too and you're going to get leverage off their operating leverage so with that phil awesome find i love it i love when these things happen and i just hope it works out remember we got to make it the next 15 years before the baby boomers roll off and and take the pressure off the social program so yep. they're gonna have to do something to absorb this debt until then so uh, other than that we're going to be in pretty massive poverty yep totally agree all right guys let us know your thoughts in the comments below otherwise we'll catch you guys on the next video don't forget to check out our stuff over at tradegenius.co yeah remember tomorrow the market's closed so i think we'll we'll probably do a video tomorrow even though the market's closed but uh remember market's closed tomorrow for juneteenth and it's back open again on thursday see you later trade genius